Okay, let's get started. Welcome to joining us. I'm Jian Xia, I'm a Apache Geo committer. Today I'm going to share with my experience about Apache Geo. It's about improving the performance of Apache Geo persistence recovery. So here's what I'm going to talk about. First, I will introduce what Apache Geo disk store is and how persistence recovery works. And then I'm going to talk about the performance improvements of persistence recovery I've done. Um, it's avoiding lock contention and introducing parallel disk store recovery. So Apache Geo offers a low latency and high concurrency data management solution. It has database-like consistency model and the shared nothing architecture. It's more than a cache. So on the screen, you can see a, a screenshot from the official Apache Geo website. It shows the, some of the features that Geo has. So they have, there are application and partitioning of your data. You can persist, persist your data into a hard drive and offers superior performance and your data is in memory. In addition to in memory data, you can persist your data to disk. It offers function execution and transactions and OQL and event processing and clustering. And uh, you can uh, you do one replication across different uh, geographic locations. And you have the, it has the continuous query and also different clients for different client languages. For example, Java, C, C Sharp, C++ and .NET. And also it offers adapters for Redis and the main cache D. I believe the community is actively working on developing new features and bug fixes for Apache Geo, making Apache Geo an even better product. So today I'm going to focus on the feature of persistence. So here's the feature about persistence. Apache Geo offers super fast, right ahead logging persistence, and it has shared nothing architecture. So the system is optimized for fast parallel recovery of nodes or, or an entire cluster. Let's look into the architecture. So here is the overview of the architecture of Apache Geo persistence. On this picture, you can see a number of cache servers and we can see that we can horizontally scale the number of cache servers. And, uh, and also for each cache server, we can attach a hard drive or a disk that in addition to the memory data, we can persist the data into the hard drive. So that in, in the event of a node failure or even a cluster failure, we can re efficiently and fa fastly re recover data from the hard drive. So let's zoom a little bit more into the cache server, see what's going on in the cache server in terms of persistence and recovery. Let's look into the cache server. So in the cache server, there are a number of regions and a number of disk stores. The regions can be replicated or partitioned, and the region is essentially a distributed hash table. So you can imagine that the regions has the uh, keys and values, and each cache server has a set of disk stores. Um, some of reg a region can have the dedicated disk store, or some regions can share the same disk store. And the cache server is a Java process. Outside the Java process, the disk store persists the data, the region data into an operating system file system. On the file system, on the bottom two boxes, you can see there are two uh, set of files for the disk stores. Um, we, we call them oplog files. Oplog stands for operation log. You can see in the directories, there are files with extensions KRF, CIF, and DIF. So the KRF are the files that stores the keys and offset for the values in the CRF files. And the CRF files uh, stores the operations of the entry, create, update, and invalidate. The DI file stores entry delete operations. So those are the files that stores all these region operations. And during recovery, the cache server will read the data from the, these files to rebuild the region in memory. 
So let's take a look at the uh, startup process. So during startup, entry keys from the KR files are loaded before entry values in the CI files. This is a performance optimization geode has so that we can recover the cluster as fast as possible. And once all the keys are loaded, entry values are loaded asynchronously. Now, it's a time to talk about the performance of persistence recovery. Since Geode offers superior performance for the applications, so we we'll always seek ways to improve the performance. In this case, this is a performance for persistence recovery for a cluster or for some nodes. So we're doing some persistent recovery tests for a whole cluster. We're doing that on the Geo Cloud, uh, on the Google Cloud. So on the Google Cloud, we have chosen some Google, Google VMs, which each has uh, 16 vCPUs and 128 gig memory. memory. And uh, each VM also has a 200 gig disk SSD hard drive. So we start with a small cluster, one locator and the two servers, and then we can scale up to uh, up to, for example, 70 servers. We start from small scale first. And for the data, we have the partition, the redundant persistent regions with 2 billion entries. And each re region key is of size 100 bytes. And we keep the default values for out-of-box geo configurations so that we can fix some of the configurations and tune the others. Now, how do we measure the performance? We measure performance using a very simple metric, the cluster recovery time, meaning the time the cluster takes to recover the data from the hard drive and until it's ready to serve the client requests. So here's what we have observed. We have loaded the data into the memory first and the data are balanced among the servers. And we, then we shut down the servers and restart the whole cluster. So we expect that because the, the data is balanced among the servers, so we expect that each server takes a similar amount of time to recover. But according to a figure on the screen, you can see that um, there are four servers and each server takes some time to recover. And most of the server takes about 700, milli, 700 seconds to recover. For example, server, server one, server three and server four, they take about 700 seconds to recover. But server two takes a longer time. Server two takes about more than 1,000 seconds to recover, which is a 50% longer than the other servers. So there are some outliers in this case. And Geo Cluster has to wait for the slowest server, slowest server to recover in order to serve the client requests. So in this case, the whole cluster will take about more than a 1,000 seconds to recover in order to serve the client requests. So what happens under hood? There are multiple ways to investigate. Let's start from the log analysis. So for the geo cluster, each server has its own log. Typically, the server the, the, the server logs range the length range from a few hundred lines of text to thousands of lines of text. It sounds scary, right? It's a long log, but for our case, we have a uh, control of our setup. So our case, the log size is about a, a few thousand lo lines of log. And there are some tips to analyze the logs. For example, typically I research for some suspicious strings, for example, exceptions, whether there's any exception in the log, or stack traces in the log, or search some keywords in the log level, for example, warning, severe level, log level. So these are the tips to analyze the logs. Also, in Geo, there is something called Thread Monitor, which is a feature that reports stuck threads in the server. So let me show you an example. Here is a screenshot of the Thread Monitor. You don't have to read every line. I, here, the screenshot just you give you an impression of what a Thread Monitor looks like. You can see that it's a stack trace. Let's zoom in a little bit more about the threat monitor. So I've minimized this lines of the stacks that is not interest of, to us at this point of time. 
So let's read from the top. I've highlighted the keywords. So this is a, this is a warning of the log level. And this is a thread monitor reports that the one thread is executed uh, as has been stuck for 112 seconds. It's about two minutes. It's a pretty long time. And the thread is waiting on a lock on the hash map. And on the bottom, you have two, you, you, see, you see two stacks of two threads. So let's go through the thread stacks. I have highlighted the um, lines of the stack. So on the top stack, we can see that there is uh, some, um, something about Gen5 cache info. So it's doing some garage operation. And uh, next to that, we can see that there's a query region processor and query region message. Looks like this thread is doing some query region operation. And let's move on. On the bottom of the thread, we can see that there's an uplog read KIF. Remember, we talked about KIF files on the disk before in the previous slide. So it looks like this thread is doing some reading from the disk to restore the data into the memory. And also in the middle of the stack, we can see that it also refers to the same Java code, gem file cache info. So both threads refer to the same Java code. Let's look into the Java code of that file and then look into the lines that is referenced by the thread stack. So here's the source code of the gem file cache info.java. In the source code on top, we can see that the code defines a hash map. It's a hash map called root regions. And on the bottom, there are two public methods. One is called get region, and the other is called query VM region. And within each method, there's a synchronized block. So the synchronized blocks are synchronizing on the hash map. So if one thread holding the lock on one synchronized block, and the other thread is trying to acquire the same lock, that thread will be blocked. So for our case, one thread is using is running the create VM region, and it acquires a lock, and is creating the VM, uh, creating the region by reading the keys from the disk and restore data. And the other thread is trying to get a region, create access a region, but it has to be, it has to wait until it has access to a lock. Now you might ask why this will slow down the cluster recovery. Let's take a look at the figure. So there are certain steps to recover the data on a server. So here I list a, a number of threads in the figure. On the, on the figure, you can see that there are two servers. And each server has a disk to recover data from. So for server one, it's recovering the data from the disk. Now let's follow the steps. In the middle of the screen, you can see that uh, there, the first step is uh, create region message. Here in the geo cluster, we in the distributed system, the geo servers exchange talk to each other by exchanging the messages. For example, in this case, the server two actually is trying to create a metadata region on the cluster. So server two is um, sending a create region message to server one. But as we described before in the previous slide, server one is busy recovering data from the disk. So that thread block the processing of create region message. So server two has to wait for the reply from server one for the create region reply message. So that region reply message is blocked on server one. And server two has to wait for that. Now on server two, it has to read KIF after creating a region. So you can see on server two, step five, read KIF is also blocked because server two hasn't received a reply from server one. So everything on server two is blocked until server one finished reading the data from the disk. So you can see that the blocking thread on server one actually slow down the other servers. This is why the cluster restart is slowed down by the threat uh, lock contention. Having analyzed the root cause of the slowness of the recovery, the solution seems straightforward. We can just replace the hash map with concurrent hash map so that we can avoid lock contentions. So after replacing the hash map with concurrent hash map, we can see significantly faster recovery. Let's look at a figure on the lower right corner. 
So here show, it, the figure shows the recovery time in terms of minutes for the cluster. There are two bars. It compares the uh, result before and after the code change. So before our improvement, the cluster takes about 37 minutes to recover. But after our improvement, the cluster takes about 25 to 26 minutes in this case. So the improvement is about 30%. And we can, can keep looking into the logs and we can see that after improvement, there is no more threat monitor stack traces, which confirms that after the improvement, there is no more log contentions for this case. And if you if are interested in this case and want to know more about the details, how this is implemented, how it's analyzed, you can look into the geo GeoGira tickets. It's the ticket geo 75, uh, 7945. So that ticket will show you the analysis and also refers to a pull request on the code on GitHub. Let's see what can we do, what, what else can we do to improve the performance of the persistence recovery. So what we have improved so far is that we have done a single region recovery with single disk store. We have improved about 30% in, in terms of performance. Now, what about multiple regions with multiple disk store? So multiple region is uh, more realistic in the real world, right? So in the setup, we then introduce two regions, each with a disk store. Now we run the same set of the test to measure the performance of the cluster recovery time. Let's look into the logs again. So here is this part of the log. In the log, there are quite a few lines of text, but they are similar. So it's trying to recover some op log or operation log from the hard drive. So on the top half, you can see that it's trying to recover some op log from disk store one. And then on the lower bottom, you can see on the bottom half, you can see that it's trying to recover the data from disk store two. And uh, you can see that I have highlighted the TID equals to 0x1. The TID means thread ID. So we can see that the same thread ID, the main thread, take care of the disk store recovery for both disk stores, which means the disk store recovery is sequential. It's handled by the same thread. So we may think about, oh, can we improve that? Can we make it parallel so that we can improve the performance? Then let's analyze the code. Then we, we can search the strings in the code, the log strings in the code. After analyzing the code, we, can, we find that there's a for loop that iterate over the disk stores and restore the disk stores during the startup. So here's the for loop and it creates disk stores one by one. Now thinking about making it parallel, we can use parallel stream to make the recovery, disk store recovery parallel. Also, we have introduced a new Boolean system properties called parallel disk store recovery. So it depends on the property value, we can introduce a parallel stream or non-parallel stream. And based on the stream for each element of a stream, we restore a disk store. So if we set the, the value of the system property to true, we will introduce parallel stream and it will recover disk stores in parallel. And in this code, you can see that we have the parallel stream and we use the stream to recover disk store in parallel. After this improvement, we can see that, let's take a look at the figure first on the upper right corner. So again, we show the recovery time of the whole cluster. This is a comparison of the recovery time between the sequential recovery and the parallel recovery of the disk stores. On the left-hand side is the sequential recovery time for a cluster. And it takes about 13 minutes for the whole cluster to re recover. But after we improve that into a parallel disk store recovery, you can see that on the figure right-hand side, that right-hand side bar, it takes about only about six or seven minutes to recover the whole cluster. So we double the speed of the recovery and we reduce the recovery time by in half. Again, we look into the logs to confirm our improvement. After the improvement, if you look into the logs, we can see that there are two threads. 
each take care of the recovery of a different disk store. So in this case, where I have highlighted that the TID equals 0x1 and TID equals 0x48. So there are two different threads. And they are taking, of, taking care of the disk store recovery separately. And we can see that the recovery of the two threads are interleaving. This is what we expected. Now, let's summarize what we have done to improve the performance of the persistence recovery. So we've done something to avoid blocking thread by replacing the hash map with concurrent hash map. This is tracked by GeoGira, Geo 7945. And we also have introduced a new parallel disk store recovery instead of a sequential recovery. This is tracked by 8035. You can refer to these two JIRAs to for more details in, as well as the code. All right, that's about it. Time for the questions. If you have questions, you can type on the chat window. Karen says, nice presentation. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, Alberto. And thanks, Diane, Aaron. Thanks, Michael. Any questions? Okay, if there is no question, we'll finish this presentation. Thank you, everyone.